Hi everyone, welcome back to the structural biology course. We are discussing structural biology techniques and today we are starting on the fifth module where we are going to continue with the x-ray crystallography. So, in structural biology technique today as I already told we are continuing with x-ray crystallography techniques and today what we are going to discuss is diffraction patterns relation between Lowy equation and Bragg's law. I talked about Bragg's law, but now we are going to look at instead of atom if it is a lattice how the Bragg's law is different and then we will see the relation between Bragg and law Lowy and then we will look at how evil sphere and Fourier transformation is also working. So, diffraction pattern I talked about data collection, but the core of data collection is always the diffraction pattern as you see in this picture where the atom is heated and a pattern is developed. If you remember in the introductory classes where I was talking about why we need a crystal instead of working on a single protein. I told in a crystal the diffraction signal is amplified by the large number of refitting units. So, when it is a single molecule the diffraction from a single molecule is not certainly measurable it is very weak signal. Whereas, when you see the proper arrangement in a crystal a 100 millimeter cube crystal content 10 to the power 12 unit cells. So, diffraction intensity is proportional to the number of unit cells. So, instead of 1 here is 10 to the power 12. So, intensity is much higher. So, you could easily measure that. We talked about that also I was talking about in a crystal the ordered periodic arrangement of the molecule produces constructive interference. What I talked about if you look at a crystal this is one axis then it is another axis and then it is the third axis. So, crystal organized a very beautiful compact 3D arrangement. But if somehow this 3D arrangement did not form properly, there would be problem and this problem would be identified by looking at the diffraction pattern. That is why diffraction pattern is very, very important in the world of protein crystallography. You got a crystal, you are happy that you are going to get information, but when you diffract it the diffraction pattern will immediately tell you you got a good crystal or not. When I say good crystal now you understand properly arranged. So, what could be bad? It could be bad in many way, but in general we say if you look at this crystal it is perfect then there might be rotational disorder as you could see here or translational disorder as you could see here. Now, if you see the irregularity in orientation translation limit the order and usefulness of the crystal. We talked about that crystallization is the most important thing I agree still, but once you get a crystal that does not mean that you are done. You have to have the crystal in perfect order and you have no role in it. This is the way the process of crystal growth the crystal order would be developed. So, I talked about diffraction pattern you see here it is a MOS film screen. So, this is MAR image plate they are circular as you see and the intensities are read in a circular fashion like a record. After the data is read the image is erased with a fluorescent light again going around in a circle. So, it takes time it 
takes about 5 to 7 minutes and this is this 5 to 7 minutes I am talking about this actually make data collection in home hugely time consuming. Why? Think about if the readout time is 5 to 7 minute and you have to get 180 frames. If other things let us say not taking any time only the readout time is let us say 6 minutes. That means, only for readout you need 18 hours. So, that is why readout time is very important and it is good that today with advancing technologies this readout time is significantly reduced. The next thing I want to talk about is a backstop. You see this is the effect of the backstop. You do not see any diffraction here because it is a small metal disc on a piece of tape. So, all you see is the disc in the center. So, when you have the beam you do not want the direct ray to hit. So, you put a beam stop. The beam stops are different types. I will show you another type of beam stop once we are going through the journey of our diffraction pattern. So, we look at the diffraction pattern, we understand the readout time and we understand the backstop or beam stop. Now, if you see the spots, you will see that some spots are very dark. Let us say this one in comparison to the other one, let us say this one. This is where actually the difference in the data collection makes. It is because of the angles where it is hitting and diffracting. So, I have shown you these slides, but just to so, the irregularity in orientation on translation limits the order and usefulness of the crystal. Perfect order you see you get all of them in one line. So, you get a pattern that is diffraction pattern and here you see here you have seen rotational disorder and none of the spots are individually clear. Here you see translational disorder and you see that the spots are merged between each other. So, the disorder destroys the periodicity leading to streaky weak fuzzy diffraction. So, yes this is bad, but this will save your time when you are working in a crystallography project. Why? You get a crystal before you build up your dream of getting a good publication, you just do a reality check, come and see the diffraction pattern. Within few frames you will understand. So, you always should check. So, that is what I was talking about bad images and another very important thing when you are going for data collection before you should always start like 0 degree. So, if you look at the 0 degree image does not diffract to high resolution here, but the spots are very well formed. So, a clear pattern is developed. Now, how I know that they are not 
in high resolution looking at those layers. More these spots going on the corner higher the resolution. But what you should do you should immediately go to 90 degree, 180 degree, 270 degree because you cannot check all the images right then it is data collection. But you should do 0, 90, 180, 270, 360 in that way like when you get the same crystal and come into 90 degree the splitting is observed in the form of white diffuse spots you would see it. So, now you know that this crystal is not good. So, always check crystal at 0 degree and 90 degree and possibly to more to check for splitting large diffuse reflections and doublets. As I am repeatedly telling like you get a crystal and you want to go for data collection. Yes, I agree that now the data collection in the home resource is much better, much quicker, but in our time we have seen with weak crystals it takes like 10 days, 14 days and after 14 days you find that with so much time, energy and all you spend and it comes with nothing. So, before data collection starts you should look at the diffraction patterns very carefully. Detectors I talked about I show you the MAR1 this is an image from a Raxis detector which is from Regaku. The detector is square so the corners are higher resolution but the main limit of resolution is the radius along the vertical and horizontal axis. Here very interesting if you see the back stop or beam stop is a metal disc followed by a rod. That is why you get the whole thing. In the other one you only get a circle. So, here the back stop is a metal disc suspended from a metal rod. The rod and disc show up white on the detector. You want to look at the intensity values. So, if you zoom in enough then the intensity value of each pixel would be displayed. So, if you see here you see that each of the pixel have their numbers. So, how you understand which one is the dark one you see the core ones if I take this is the core you see that in the central it is 47,000, 44,000, 41,000 whereas here you get 4,000. So, 10 time difference in the intensity and from here you could understand that the distance and angle between reflections are reciprocally related to the real space unit cell dimensions. So, from this information you could actually go for understanding. Very important is how to do the peak search. So, you could ask the program to search the image for reflection and when the program is picking up spots if you are happy you could accept the found reflection and when you do that this will write a file called pics.file. So, all the accepted pics would be now recorded into a separate file, but here actually you could do good work. You could think about you could be putting your mind active towards the questions are there spots under the prediction like all the spots are predicted or some spots are somehow not predicted by the program are the spots which are not predicted and what are the red spots. What are the red spot if you see the red spot and I zoom you will understand these are the red spots. So, the red spots, the red spots mean overloads. It is because the exceeding 
intensity in the linear range of the image plate. So, the image plate have a capacity if the intensity is more than that then you get red spots. And here instead of pixel value what you will see it could not put it like that and it report with this sign. So, now you are looking at the spots and you want to modify, but to do that first you should have idea about what or how the spot should be theoretically. So, that is called reflection profiling spots are assumed to be Gaussian in shape you get these ones all are good when you see a bell shape, but if the center is maxed out somehow it gets the maximum value then the curve is flattened at the top like this you know cut here and this is not good. In that case the intensity cannot be accurately determined. So, you have to understand those basics. Now, how you could work on you zoom in and ask for the integration box. What is the integration box? The box where the spots are. So, suppose you are thinking the program could not take the actual portion of the spot like suppose let us give a very crude example like this is your spot where the maximum intensity is definitely here and then going there. So, suppose the program have taken this part like that you could have changed that that is where your role. So, first you what you have to do you have to zoom in and ask for the integration box. Then the square is the background boundary you see that the square is the noise outside circle is the overlap area. So, this is extra area and the inside circle encloses the spot. So, now you open it and you could modify to little bit you know centering or something and in that way if you do that you could find some spots which are not actually taken automatically by the program. You could do that manually that what is the benefit of that by doing that you could make some false spot out you could make some real spot in and that would help your indexing and further data processing with higher quality. So, indexing we talked about the program determines the best lattice fit to each point group. It prints the closest real fit to the space group restrictions and then what the space group restriction would actually demand. So, you got the first data you look at the quality of the data by looking at the diffraction pattern and now you go to the next step which is indexing. The tensor index, tensor index is the column you will see which gives a correlation of the fit. So, if you look at what you learn diffraction pattern you learn this is the first critical thing you have to understand while going for crystallographic data collection. If you see that the spots are not in a pattern if they are diffuse if they are like merging to each other and all these things you know that the crystal quality the ordering of crystal there is some mistake. But sometime you get you do the auto collection of spots you get some spot now by working manually you could improve that and once you do that you come to the indexing. So, this is a file as I talked about this is tensor index in the tensor index 
if you see you are getting values for different space groups primitive cubic, I centered cubic, F centered cubic, primitive rhombohedral, primitive hexagonal, primitive tetragonal, I centered tetragonal, primitive orthorhombic, C centered orthorhombic, I centered orthorhombic, F centered orthorhombic, primitive monoclinic, C centered monoclinic, primitive triclinic and then you get this tensor index and you know which cells are best with the symmetry resistance and without the symmetry resistance. So, here you see this is having 0 percent tensor index. We have discussed about Bragg law. Bragg's law talked about the relationship between an X-ray light shooting into and its reflection off from the crystal surface, but we will look at it for a different perspective. So, what we know here is the length when there is to reflected light the length d e which is this is the same as the e f. So, this d e to e f. Now, the total distance travelled by the bottom wave could be expressed by its constructive interference of the radiation from successive planes occurs when the path difference is an integral number of wavelengths. Now, the distance C e which is this to this the green line equal to d the distance between the two layers and d equal to d sin theta, e f equal to d sin theta. So, d e plus e f equal to 2 d sin theta and when n lambda equal to 2 d sin theta. So, that is what Bragg's law we have discussed before. As I told d is the spacing of the plane n equal to order of diffraction 2 d sin theta equal to n lambda. Now, because sin theta less than equal to 1, Bragg reflection can only occur for the wavelengths which satisfying n lambda less than equal to 2d. And that is the reason visible light cannot be used. No diffraction occurs when this condition would not be satisfied. The diffracted beams from any set of lattice planes can only occur at particular angles predicted by the Bragg's law. So, this is what we discussed and I have bring them again because I want to discuss about a similar but slightly different treatment. Here instead of the atoms, we are discussing lattice point. So, if we consider x rays incident at angle theta on one of the lattice planes and study the scattering of this x ray from adjacent lattice points, there will be constructive interference of the wave scattered from the two successive lattice points A and B in the plane if the distances AC and d b are equal. So, look at the condition for constructive interference of waves scattered from the same plane. If the scattered wave makes the same angle with the plane as the incident wave, the diffracted wave will look as if it was reflected from the plane. So, instead of diffraction it would look as it is reflected. So, it is common to consider the scattering from lattice points rather than atoms because if you have followed the discussion you now understand atoms are there, but the orientation would be in the lattice. So, the lattice points are what important. 
because it is the basis of atoms associated with each lattice point that is the true repeat unit of the crystal. Atoms are there, but it is the unit cell is the lattice. The lattice point is an analog of the line on an optical diffraction grating. The basis represent the structure of the line. Coming to diffraction maxima coherent scattering from a single plane is not sufficient to obtain a diffraction maxima. It is also necessary that successive planes also scatter in phase. So, this will be the case if the path difference for scattering of of two adjacent plane is an integral number of wavelengths and that happens if 2d sin theta equal to L lambda. So, in that way rather than atom it comes more important when it is the lattice points. We are now shifting our journey from Bragg to Lowy, but we will come back again. See, so diffraction of X-rays by crystal the science of X-ray crystallography originated in 1912 with the discovery of Max von Laue that crystal diffract X-rays. Von Laue was a German physicist who won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1914 for his discovery of the diffraction of X-rays by crystal. So, he is kind of considered as the father of X-ray diffraction. Also, I talked about this LMU and I want to again talk about this. When Von Laue was working as a lecturer in LMU under Sommerfeld, at the same time Ewald was writing his doctoral thesis under the same guide and their interaction was really critical and help each other in a huge way. Also, they had interaction with Braggs and influence each other. Interestingly, when Bragg came to Cambridge, they met Watson and Creek and now you know the history, so you know how the technique of X-ray crystallography helped Watson and Crick to get the first structure of the biological macromolecule DNA, which probably happens one of the most significant discovery in the history of scientific discovery to understand DNA, to understand pattern, to understand its structure and further the birth of molecular level biology based on visualization. But coming back as I told the science of X-ray crystallography originated in 1912 with the discovery of von Laue that crystal diffract X-rays. Since that time single crystal X-ray diffraction has developed into the most powerful method known for obtaining the atomic arrangement in the solid state. X-ray crystallographic structure determination can be applied to a wide range of structure sizes which we have discussed and we are going to discuss. From very small molecule and simple salts to complex minerals synthetically prepared inorganic and organometallic complexes natural product and at the base to the biological macromolecules such as protein and now even the big viruses. So, you could easily understand von Laue and his discovery have changed the spectrum or the research of X-ray diffraction single crystal study. Let us try little bit to understand Lau equation. The Lowy equation relates the incoming waves to the outgoing waves in the process of diffraction by a crystal lattice. 
So, if you look at this picture and consider A, B, C be the primitive vectors of the crystal lattice L. So, this is the crystal lattice we are considering where we are considering A, B, C be the primitive vector. The atoms would be located at the point x any point equal to P A plus Q B plus R C. These are the integer linear combination of the primitive vectors. Now, if we consider k in be the wave vector of the incoming beam, incoming light and let k out be the wave vector of the outgoing beam. The difference k out minus k in equal to del k, del k is called the scattering vector it is also called transferred wave vector and it measures the change between the two wave vectors. So, what happened as I told it is a comparison between the incoming wave and the outgoing wave and considering k in as the incoming beam wave vector, wave vector for incoming beam k out again wave vector for outgoing beam their difference k out minus k in is del k. This del k is also a vector which is scattering vector. The three conditions that the scattering vector del k must satisfy called the Lowy equation conditions are the following. The numbers h k l determined by the equation a dot del k equal to 2 pi h b dot del k equal to 2 pi k and c dot del k equal to 2 pi l and they they should be integer number. So, this is a conversion from a to h b to k and c to l which is the relation between a real lattice and a reciprocal lattice. Each choice of the integers h k l called Miller indices determines a scattering vector del k. So, now you understand the relation because you already know about the Miller indices, you already know about the reciprocal space and you know how amazingly the Miller system is developed, the Miller indices system so that we could get integers when it is parallel. So, many cases could be solved by using Miller indices. Hence, there are infinitely many scattering vectors that satisfy the Lowe equation. So, they who satisfy they form a lattice L star called the reciprocal lattice of the crystal lattice. So, now you understand the correlation. This condition allows a single incident beam to be diffracted in infinitely many direction. However, the beams that correspond to high Miller indices are very weak and cannot be observed. So, the beams with low Miller indices are important or it could be measured. These equations are enough to find a basis of the reciprocal lattice from which the crystal lattice can be determined. So, you could get each other. This is considered as the core principle of X-ray crystallography. So, you know the condition. Now, what we will do? 
we will find the relation between the Lowy equation and Bragg's law. So, if G equal to H A plus K B and L C is the reciprocal lattice vector, we know by definition of the reciprocal lattice basis vectors that G dot X equal to G dot P A plus Q B plus R C. Now, that means 2 pi h p plus k q plus l r equal to 2 pi n, where n is an integer. We use the definition for a reciprocal lattice vector which gives the factor of 2 pi. Right? Now, the interesting point is that this relation is nothing but a Lau equation you do not get it? <laughs> yes, because I did not go into the mathematical part of the Lau equation, but let us go there. So, mathematical briefing of Lau for some integer n that depends on the point x. By simplifying this, we could get delta k dot x equal to k out minus k in dot x equal to 2 pi n. Now, this relation is enough to check that this condition is satisfied at the primitive vectors a, b, c which is exactly what Lau equation is saying because then for the other points if you see x equal to P A plus Q B plus R C, we have delta k dot x equal to delta k dot P A plus Q B plus R C because x is replaced by equal to P 2 pi h plus Q 2 pi k plus R 2 pi L. That means 2 pi h P plus k Q plus L R which means now we know 2 pi n. So, now if you see delta k dot x equal to 2 pi n which is equal to g x g dot x when n is the integer h p plus k q plus l r. So, now you understand that the interesting point is this is nothing but the Lau equation. Hence, we identify del k equal to k out minus k in which we know equal to g. This is called Lau condition and in a sense diffraction patterns are a way to experimentally measure the reciprocal lattice. Now, if we rewrite the Lau condition k out minus k in equal to g, so absolute value of k in whole square equal to absolute value of k out minus g whole square. So, k in absolute value square equal to k out absolute value square minus 2 k out dot g plus g absolute value square. Now, we apply elastic scattering condition for this which means the wave vector of incident beam is equal to the wave vector of the outgoing beam. So, 2 k out dot g equal to absolute g's whole square. Essentially, the Lau condition is the conservation of momentum and is a consequence of a very general statement that the crystal momentum is only conserved up to a reciprocal lattice vector while the elastic condition is conservation of energy carried by the excess. As you see here this equal to this. So, you could say conservation of energy. Now, the vector G specifies a set of Bragg planes in the reciprocal space normal tweet. 
this implies a corresponding set of Bragg planes in real space that is integer solution for p q r to the equation which is h p plus k q plus l r equal to n. For integer coefficients h k l and order n, now the vectors k out, k in and g will form an isosceles triangle and isosceles triangle means two sides are equal. This means that x rays seemingly reflect of these planes at the same angle as their angle of approach theta with respect to the plane. Since the angle between k out and g is pi by 2 minus theta, this implies that k out dot g equal to absolute value of k out into absolute value of g sin theta. So, absolute value of k out equal to 2 pi by lambda. If the lattice constant is d, the spacing between the two layers, g absolute equal to 2 pi n by d. This is because by definition we require g dot x equal to 2 pi n. So, from the earlier findings, now we can pick a set of Bragg planes in real space with interplane separation absolute x equal to d and without loss of the generality choose g parallel x. With this, we could now recover Bragg's law. You will see 2 k out dot g equal to absolute g square to k out g sin theta is g square 2. So, we replace with the values we got 2, 2 pi by lambda, 2 pi n by d sin theta equal to 2 pi n by d square which is 2 d sin theta equal to n lambda. So, in that way we appear to Bragg's laws equation starting from Lowy equation of diffraction. If we look for lattice transformation, the reciprocal lattice represents the Fourier transform of another lattice, usually a Bravais lattice. In the normal usage, the initial lattice whose transform is represented by the reciprocal lattice is usually a periodic spatial function in real space and is also known as the direct lattice. So, you see the crystal lattice that is the direct lattice and you see the reciprocal lattice. So, their interconnection is very important and how you could do that? You could do that with a mathematical operation which is known as Fourier transform and if you see, you will see the picture pictorial representation for crystal in a direct space and crystal in a reciprocal space. So, that difference is clear here and our data actually connect as we have shown in different aspects we are getting data from direct and some from reciprocal lattice measurement. So, the process details in data analysis, the first step is indexing as I have discussed finding the unit cell orientation and space group. Then we have to integrate the data determining the intensities of each spot and then we have to do merging which is scaling, averaging and determining the data quality. The crystal structure solution was first happened by direct method. Herbert Hoffman and Jerome Curley, they were awarded Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1985 
for their outstanding achievement in the development of direct method for the determination of crystal structures. So, as we know early crystal structures was limited to small centrosymmetric structures with heavy atoms, it was easy this was solved by vector method which is Patterson method. The development of direct method of phase determination made it possible to solve non centrosymmetric structures on light atom compounds. But then we will discuss about what we call the problems and all we face in solving the protein crystals. In the next class we will look at about indirect methods, about the famous phase problem, about structure factor, intensity and all regarding that. Thank you very much.